Today, Amazon held their annual device event and we're gonna go over what devices are coming out. There's some of the usual updates to the Fire, TV sticks, and tablets. There's an Echo Show 8 update and a new device, the Echo Hub. This is one I'm curious about. Did Amazon finally nail a good touch interface for smart devices? Now for this video, I'm only gonna cover the hardware side of things, but Amazon did announce some new services and some AI features for Alexa that should help with performance and make things more natural. So we'll talk about those things in another video. First update is to the recently released Echo Pop. That is the most affordable Echo you could buy out there. There's now a new kids version for $49.99. You have the Avengers and the Princess Edition. So when you ask for jokes and stuff, it, it'll they'll fit into that category. These come with six months of Kids Plus. And what that is, is that it offers kid-directed content from stories, uh, to jokes and information, all of that stuff, it caters to the kid side. Now, you also have the parental controls, um, but it makes it a child safe Echo. Other than that, it's the same as the other Echo Pop. If you'd like to learn more about the new Echo Pop, I'll put a link to that video down in the description, along with links to all the devices I talk about today. Next is an update to the Echo Show 8. There's a new version that has some nice updates. It is $149.99, it is still an eight inch display, but they've added the edge to edge glass that's found on the Echo Show 5. They've also centered the camera and the microphone so that it's just better for video calls. The new microphones have better noise cancellation so it doesn't pick up background noise. If you do video calls on your Echoes, this might be a nice update. Personally, I've never done any video calls on my Echoes. I am either gonna use FaceTime on one of my Apple devices or it's Zoom or Skype. Now this new Echo Show 8 definitely focuses on improved sound. They have put in redesigned speakers and bass radiator to give a fuller sound. Amazon also announced a new spatial audio so that it does give a ver very immersive feel. I'm curious because the speakers are on the side and the back, so I'm really curious to see how full that sounds. A new update that I could see being helpful is the adaptive content. And the way this works is if you're across the room, you're gonna see content that is easier to see from across the room. But as you get closer, it'll detect that you're getting closer and the content will change to a more detailed view. So for example, you ask for the weather, you'll be able to read it at a distance what the current weather is. But as you get closer, the screen then changes to show you the next few days worth of weather. The new Echo Show 8 is 40% faster with its new language model, and it really can serve as a smart home hub. It, you can use it as a matter, thread, and Zigbee hub. What's great too, when you're using matter, thread, and Zigbee, when you have your devices connect locally, you just get a faster response time. So things don't have to go to the cloud and come back. Overall though, I like the Echo Show. I really think it's the best value when it comes to the size of screen and all the features you get. But this next Echo Show 8, I don't think I could recommend. It is the Echo Show 8 Photo Edition, and it comes with six months of a subscription service that allows you to use your photos and video as the primary content on the screen for your Echoes. You also get 25 gigabytes of extra storage so you can upload photos to Amazon Photo. Other than those things, it is the same exact Echo Show 8. Now when the six months passes, you then have to pay $1.99 to keep that photo edition and having your content there. <laughs> Dollar ninety nine a month, a month to make your photos and videos on an Echo Show. I know Amazon needs to find a way to monetize these things better, but I don't think that's the answer. I think the real answer is better hardware that you can make better apps that they can sell on an app store, collect a piece, and make their money that way. It's what Google and Apple does with their apps and devices. Next is the new Echo Frames. If you're not familiar with the Echo Frames, they are a set of frames that has a speakers on the side that point towards your ears, and they have microphones on them, so you can call up Alexa. Now, there is no smart screen on these. It is really like an Echo on your head. Now, they have a total of seven different styles. You can get them as prescription glasses, you could get them as blue light, or as sunglasses. There's now a new designer Carrera frames, which they're interesting. 
The new Echo frames have improved battery life, so you could get six hours of playback of audio, or you could get 14 hours of general use. There's also multi-point pairings so that you could connect it to multiple devices and switch between them easier. There's also new speakers that point towards your ears. It's supposed to improve the audio, increase the bass, and make it so other people can't hear it as much. Now, that, that is one of the things it's hard to get behind these. I don't see them as a audio device for listening to anything because others can hear what's coming out. Uh, really, from an Echo standpoint, you can take advantage of the Echo Buds and be able to do all the same things. But if you use Alexa a lot, you're on the go, you don't want to have an Echo in each room, or you can't use earbuds, this may be a great option for you. Before we talk about the Fire devices in the Echo Hub, there's some new Blink hardware. They have like a new Sync Module Pro, an extension battery to get more life out of your battery powered cameras. Um, there's a new flood cam. That's about it. I'm not gonna get into details. One, because I don't use Ring that much. And two, I don't understand why Amazon owns two different companies and they haven't just rolled it all into Ring yet. So it, I would just go with Ring devices personally or go with some other camera that has local storage. Next is the new Eero Wi-Fi 7 router. Um, some of you may know that it, we're starting to see a lot more Wi-Fi 6E routers. A big difference with Wi-Fi 6E is that it introduced a new six gigahertz channel. Now Wi-Fi 7 uses that same channel. It just allows more traffic and you uses it more efficiently. Uh, but it is pretty expensive. This new set starts at $599 for one router and goes up to $1699 if you buy a three pack. But I think Wi-Fi 7 for most people is just overkill. Just go with Wi-Fi 6E, it'll cover you because more devices are starting to use that six gigahertz band. As for this one, I'm gonna be waiting until we see a really good sale on these before I try it. Next is the Ring Stick cam. The new Ring Stick Up cam brings some new features, but it also brings a pretty big price tag at $179. I am curious about this because it is a 1080p camera and way more expensive than a lot of 4K and 2K cameras out there. So the new features, it's supposed to look better with HDR video, and then you have color night vision that's supposed to look better. Um, but the thing that's different with this Stick Up cam is there's a new aerial view and this thing uses like 3d tracking so with this aerial view it can give you a little map showing you where motion was and where someone has been um, sounds really cool I don't know at that price if I'm that interested in um, but yeah it's I'm I'm curious because it's a 1080p camera it costs a lot of money next let's talk about fire devices we'll start off first with the fire HD tablets there are two new kids versions you have the fire HD 10 kids that is $189.99 you can pre-order that today uh, that one is directed towards kids three to seven years old now the fire HD 10 kids pro tablet is for kids 6 to 12. Both of these tablets are lighter and 25% faster than the previous version. They are 1080p screens. They have three gigabytes of RAM in them. Um, they, they make great media devices more than anything. If you want productivity and other stuff, I would go with an iPad. They each have 13 hours of battery and they come with a year of Kids Plus. And that Kids Plus is going to give them content like books, games, stories, and other things directed towards them. Also, you get two years of a worry-free warranty. So if a kid happens to break it, Amazon has you covered. Next is a new one. It is the Fire TV soundbar. This is a 24 inch soundbar for $119. It's two speakers in it, but with its spatial audio, it's supposed to give you a virtual surround sound out of it. Now this is meant to connect up to a Fire TV um, so that you can just sync the audio right to it. Or you can use an HDMI cable coming out of your TV's arc port going to the sound bar. You can also connect devices to the sound bar using Bluetooth. So if you this is your primary speaker in a room and you want to send stuff over from your phone, just pair it up with Bluetooth. Now, I'm curious how this thing sounds. It's not a very big speaker, but I would think that it d sounds better than most 
TVs with their little speakers in it. I just don't expect really good sound out of it at that price point. And also the fact that a lot of sound bars come with a separate sub. This doesn't have that. Now let's talk about the new Fire TV 4K and 4K Max. The 4K version is $49.99 and it's 30% faster than the previous version. It supports all the formats you'd want like Dolby Digital, 4K Ultra HD, Dolby Atmos, all the standards. The one I'd recommend though is the Fire TV 4K Max. One, it's only $10 more and it has some nice improvements. Personally, I don't know why Amazon's making two Fire TV sticks price 10 bucks apart. It's confusing. Now the Fire TV 4K Max, it is $59.99. It is two gigahertz, so it's the fastest processor they've made. It also supports Wi-Fi 6E, so it can take advantage of that faster channel. Like the 4K stick, it, you, it supports Dolby Digital, Dolby Atmos, 4K Ultra HD, all the formats you want to uh, make your movies look good. A new feature to the Fire TV stick is the ambient experience. You don't get this on the regular 4K, but what this does is when it's in a resting state, it turns your TV into a big smart display. So you can see your calendar, you can see uh, the weather, see other things up on the screen. You can also take advantage of the 2000 free pieces of artwork. So you can have Arno on your TV. Now let's talk about this Echo Hub. This is the one I'm curious about. Everything else has just been tweaking and updating a product that's already out. This new Echo is not available yet. You can request an email when it does become available. It is $179.99, so it's more expensive than an eight inch Echo Show. Um, it doesn't have the speakers that that does, uh, but it does have a different interface. Now this can be mounted on the wall or you can buy a separate stand to use it more like an Echo Show. This is a device that is really meant for the smart home. So I'm curious about this. It does have a Matter Hub built in, Thread Hub, Zigbee Hub, and is meant to control devices locally when it can. So commands to turn on your smart devices should be a lot faster. Now looking at the interface, it does look like a decent interface. You can watch multiple cameras at the same time. You can access routines quickly. It looks like things are broken up into categories that make sense. I like the idea of a good smart home interface from them. It's one of the things that have been missing. I just hope the hardware keeps up with the software. It's one of the things with the Echo Shows now is you push and wait for the screen and push and wait. Push and wait, push and wait. Now, what do you think about the Echo Hub? Is this something that you would buy and you see value in having? Or is there some of the other devices that you're interested in? Let us know in the comment section. Now, a device you should check out is this Echo Show 5 here. I never recommended the Echo Show 5 before because it doesn't sound that great, but this new one has some good updates there. So go check that out. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching. Bye.